all of you here this morning. I think this is kind of the core of the epilepsy surgery alumni, perhaps. And at the last meeting, Gary Gibbons had suggested that perhaps we could um, videotape one of these so that people who are going to be having the surgery could see how things have gone for most people after surgery, get some of their feelings about what the surgical course was like and then what happened after surgery to them. So that's why we're having this anniversary party today. It was Shelley Johnson's idea that we have an anniversary cake as her uh, one year anniversary from surgery is tomorrow. But most, for most of you, there's some kind of an anniversary today, whether it's five months, eight months, or in some cases, two years. Um, I'd like each of you to talk a little bit about part of the surgical process. And first, Tim Thompson, I would like you to talk about your life before surgery. And as you were anticipating the surgery, what went on? Okay, my life before surgery was basically it dealt with I couldn't find a job without people saying uh, I, I would apply for a job. I would state to them what I had. I had epilepsy, and they said, sorry, we can't hire you. I had one case that I was hired by the airlines to be a plane cleaner. I was given a physical, passed the physical, uh, passed all the tests, whatever it might be. And because I had told them on my applications, I had, uh, I, I took Dilantin, Mycelin, and Tegretol. They said, no, we can't hire you. We have a company policy, Steve, we can't hire you. And up until the time I had the surgery, I had been in, in three car wrecks. And luckily, it was just me, myself, and telephone poles in my car. And I was never really hurt, but it was just, that feeling of kind of, uh, what, what can I do next? Medication's not really doing it, and it's not really helped me out any. And I talked to, I talked to with my doctor at the time about having surgery, and we talked about a program up at the uh, University of Oregon at the time. And they it turned out the doctor that, was, that could do it was not in town, he was gonna be gone. And so I happened to watch a special on one of our, uh, TV stations here in town, and they they had Dr. Laxer and, and one of the first patients that had the surgery done. And so I got on the old phone, and the first person I, I called to find out what, what it was, and the first person I talked to was Dr. Laxer. And I told Dr. Laxer what my doctor had told me, that I had my epilepsy was on my right temporal lobe, and he told me that he thought he, the surgery could be done, and Dr. Laxer told me the same thing. And so they scheduled me to have the tests for the uh, telemetry on November 2nd of 82. And about three weeks later, I had surgery. And I haven't had any seizures since. It's the best, it's the best thing that's happened to me. It's meant a lot. And it's meant, it's meant a lot to my parents and uh, people around me that knew, that knew me before surgery and now know me after. I've got an overall better outlook on life. I've uh, found I, I, I'm more easy going than what I was. And it just made a big difference in me for the good. It's the best thing that will that will happen to you. That's my personal feeling. Are you working now? I do, I, I do work now full time. Yes, my name is Lynn Myers, and I can tell you it was fine. Okay, I don't know. It was okay. It didn't uh, bother me at all, and I was glad that I had them because it helped with my surgery to find out where it was at, and the doctors knew where they could um, operate on my brain so that they could take out the problem area. And like Tim said, my life is a lot better, too, because I haven't been having any seizures either because of it. No, I didn't, I didn't have any headaches at all. The uh, implant didn't hurt because I was asleep at the time, but... Yeah. 
Yes. No, I don't. Have to stay awake for it, but you do for the operation. No, I don't. Mm. Hi, I'm Gary Gibbons. I'm the one that <clears throat> you can blame for having this film, because I started it, all right? I was talking to Mary about the idea of, of taping this, because my wife had the surgery November 18th of 83. At that time, I had not spoken to anyone who'd had the surgery, and I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit that. Um, I talked to Mary, I talked to a couple of doctors here and there, but I hadn't talked to anyone who actually survived it, and uh, I was really nervous. I was concerned uh, for my wife. She was in, in great uh, mental condition. I mean, she was gung-ho, ready to go for it. She had no qualms about it. Let's go, up two, three, four, you know, whee! <laughs> I'm the one sitting on the floor in a bundle of nerves. Uh, if I'd had someone to talk to, uh, I think that my mental anguish would have been a lot less, and that's part of why I suggested this videotape. I've talked to nurses and doctors alike who have said, uh, particularly the uh, OR team, they've said, well, we've heard, you know, we've done 35 or 50 operations by now, and we've heard reports of people, you know, doing well and going on and going to work or going back to work and doing a lot better. But we haven't seen any of them. And I thought, well, maybe if we have a videotape, um, it can show that, yeah, somebody actually can survive this thing. And it's interesting for me to see all the different types of people. Uh, epilepsy does not, you know, hit just one particular type of person. There's no age group. There's no uh, occupation that has uh, a larger likelihood of it. There's uh, nothing you eat that can give it to you. Uh, there's, you know, it's pick anybody in the population could have it. Uh, and and uh, they're just plain folks. Nothing special about them except their determination and their willingness to uh, go on and, and cure their problem. To them, it's something that hopefully can be cured and they're willing to seek a cure. They're willing to ask for help and accept it when it's offered to them. And I feel that uh, it's one of the best things that's happened to me and my wife. Uh, we were married three years before the surgery. I knew beforehand, uh, before I married her, that this was something that I had to live with. And uh, Patty and I talked about it, and it was just one of those things that we had to uh, accept in each other. Each of us has shortcomings. Uh, I do a lot of things around the house that make Patty impatient. Uh, this is uh, just something that makes you different, but not, what, not bad, I guess would be one way of putting it. So it, it's just a way of adjusting and, and how you cope with it. And part of the reason for having a film like this is that to tell you that, hey, we lived through it. Things are doing well. People actually uh, do recover. And they go on to live a normal life, an improved life. And that's the part that excites me the most. Well, the most frightening part to me was when he had to use the suction, or Dr. Rosenbaum. Oh, just because he had to go so deep in me into the, uh, what do we call it? The nerve ending. It hurt. And when he got that far, all I could think of was, oh, what's going to happen? I just, my mind just went. And, uh, 